If you spend even a few minutes with a very active voiceover user, you will learn two things quickly. Firstly, they are remarkably adept at navigating through even complex user interfaces. And second, they all set a reading speed at an extraordinary fast pace, way faster than you or I would use, and perhaps even unintelligibly fast without extraordinary practice, which is of course what they have. Now it's important to take both these things into account when building your UI. These users aren't just trying voiceover out of curiosity, but they are effectively voiceover power users who rely on it to access your app and get the most out of it every single day. As a result, it's really important that our UI removes as much clutter as possible so users can navigate around it quickly without having to listen to voiceover reading out unhelpful descriptions of everything along the way. Now, beyond setting uh, labels and hints, there are several ways we can control what voiceover reads out as part of our UI. And there are three in particular I want to focus on here. First, we can mark images as being unimportant for voiceover. Second, we can hide views entirely from the underlying accessibility system. And third, we can group several views as one. Now, all of these are simple changes to make, but they result in a big, big improvement. For example, we can tell SwiftUI that a particular image is just there to make the UI look better. And that's done by saying image decorative. And whether it's a simple bullet point or an animation or your apps, mascot, dog, whatever, running around on the screen, it doesn't actually convey any information. And so image decorative tells SwiftUI to be ignored by the system. So we could say here, I want to do image decorative character, for example. Pull in that character, but in this case, my apps mascot, she doesn't actually add anything to the uh, system, just there as a picture to placeholder stuff it'll just hide it from the system. It's just there for decoration only. And it does still leave it being available to voiceover if it has important traits. For example, if we said uh, it's, a, it's a button, if we add the traits is button, then it'll be highlightable. Or if we attach a tap gesture, that'll still work, but it won't read out image character. It won't use the file name as the automatic label. If you add a label or hint, that will be used. Now, if you want to go a step further, you can use a different modifier, which is accessibility hidden. I'll use true. That makes the view completely invisible to the underlying voiceover system. It won't even be visible anymore. And so, obviously only use this if the view really does add nothing at all. If you place a view off screen, for example, then uh, it's literally not visible to users but voiceover will still see it. It'll still navigate through there if it has to, hide it. And so if users can't see it visually, hide it also from voiceover and the underlying iOS system here. The last way to hide information from voiceover is through grouping and it lets us control how the system reads through several views that are related in a similar kind of group. For example, in a layout like this, uh, vstack text, your score is, and then text 1000 dot font uh, dot title. Now in this situation, voiceover will see this thing as your score is, and you swipe 1000. So you'll see that two different text views that aren't related. One, your score is one with a thousand, and both of those are genuinely unhelpful. And so this is where a different modifier called, I'll show it to you, accessibility element comes in. And you can pass a children parameter here and tell it what to do with the children. For example, we could say, I want to combine these children together. Read them together. Your score is 1000, is what it will read now. And that works really well when the child views contain separate information. But in our case, these children really should be read as one single entity. And so a better option is to use the same accessibility element children modifier, but don't use combine, use ignore. And that'll mean these child views become invisible to voiceover. And instead, we can go ahead and provide our own label using accessibility label of your score is 1000. So don't read my children, read this one label here instead. Honestly, it's worth trying both of those in practice. This option here, 
or using combine instead just so you can hear how they sound different because combine it's still two different views that are just read together so you get a short pause between two pieces of text on the other hand uh having a dedicated ignore with its own label then it'll read it uh more naturally i should say uh that children ignore is a default value for the accessibility element modifier so you can just say uh pass no parameter and you'll get children ignore by default 